What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of The Blown Save. Uh, you made it to the weekend. We're here to heap company once more. Uh, thank you guys for joining us again. If it's your first time, welcome. Uh, before we get started, guys, don't forget to follow us on the social media scene. You can follow us on Twitter at the blown underscore save and on Instagram at the blown save. Don't forget, you guys can also still reach out to us at the blown save podcast at gmail.com. And uh, we're back for the new year and another year of the blown save. I'm glad to report that both the compa and I, both our families, made it through the new years without getting sick this time around. Compa, how was your new year's, man? Uh, it was low key. I mean, we went to sleep. My hair after uh, midnight, um, just it was literally me, the boys, and the wifey, and the doggy, and that was it, man. Me and the wife took a shot together, and then called it a night right after that. that was it. <laughs> responsible, responsible. A lot of people yeah. went out. A lot of people got sick. Um, yeah, I think they were saying right now, 3,700 new cases in just L.A. 37, alone. 37,000. Oh, sorry, sorry. 37,000 new cases in L.A. County alone. <laughs> Um, today, today. Yeah. it's not even the weekend or from the the new year or whatever it was. It was from today, guys. Yeah, guys, it was 40, 47,000 or something like that. Guys, let's be safe. Yeah, huh? I mean, if you're at home listening to us, well, congratulations. You got something to listen to. Maybe laugh a little bit. Um, but but still, man, like just fucking be safe. Um, don't go to overcrowded areas and, and doing stupid things and. <sighs> Think of the children. <laughs> <laughs> um, other than that, man, you got anything else uh, that that you've done? It's it's eight days now into the new year. Any any big uh, big things? <laughs> new new year, new you kind of thing, or what? Uh, I mean, wash my truck. I mean, I've been doing the house stuff that you know I told you mm -hmm. been, uh, damage control. You know, had the leak in the in the roof, um, in the patio, so I took care of that. Uh, patch that up today, you know, I'm trying to think I, I do a little lot of little house projects Like I can't even remember because I, I create like little checklists for myself mm -hmm. all the time So um, I know one thing I did fail at was I tried to go get the booster and they were all out when I went So now I got to try to go again a different time um, But yeah, man, I create I created my goals for the year, you know I even included you in one of them, you know um, which is uh, in July. I want to go to Colorado to go watch the Dodgers uh, play Colorado, the, Rockies. the Rockies. Yeah, for, yeah, yeah. For Pantone 294. Uh -huh. I put it on the schedule already. I talked to the wifey and um, and she said, oh, is it going to be just us? Is it going to be just the family? Is it going to be just me or what? You know, like, and I said, well, it all depends on how our finances are, right. are looking and whatnot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for so, sure. But that's like a big one. I made my goals for the year in terms of finances um i made my goals for the year in terms of trips that i want to take um i'm going to be going to Jerez, zacatecas uh, my uh, dad's hometown in april right on so i'll be gone for a week i'm very excited about that i've been there since i was i graduated college and i graduated college a couple uh, years ago 17 years ago 17 <laughs> <laughs> one or two Same time yeah so um that and then i made my goals in terms of i i like renovating the house man I, it's, it gets addicting like it's you know, this is my castle type of thing. So yeah. I really like doing that stuff. So I made my goals of what I want to do with renovations to the house. So, um, yeah. So those are kind of the goals I've made so far. Right on, right on. I know for us, yeah. um, doing a little bit of renovation at the house, we're refinancing. We're in the middle of a refinance right now to kind of bring the payment down a little bit and and uh, take advantage of, of the situation right now. Um, other than that, um, one of our goals is to get the LLC started and get the the um, the web store going and stuff like that. So it'll be exciting. I think definitely, definitely uh, we're all moving in the right direction. And, and uh, it's it's like they say, right? If the people you surround yourself aren't trying to build you up, then they're holding you back. And you gotta you gotta really realize that. And the sooner you realize that, the better you're gonna be. Um, so another goal of mine is to spend more time with you. Aww. <laughs> yeah. We've been doing a good job of hanging out with the boys today. Oh yeah, you know, Luke and Luke didn't cry as much today, you know, like we were torturing them, you know. Yeah, there was no torture. Uh, we couldn't yeah. get Benny to stop eating. Um, Benny was on it today, huh? But it was cool seeing him around. I feel yeah. like he's blending in with the boys now, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you notice mm -hmm. that kind of like the boys were kind of like, oh, okay, playing with them and stuff like that. Yeah, watching out after him. Yeah, definitely. So it's cool. getting that made, that it's made me happy. yeah, it's getting better. 
Um, as he's getting a little bit older, obviously, because he's now he can, right. the kids are running and he's like, okay, let me waddle my way that way. And then, yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. there's a little penguin everywhere. There you go. <laughs> All right, man, let's fuck it. Let's jump into it. We got a lot of NFL to cover today. Um, there's not been very much movement in the MLB. So I'm going to do the MLB. Oh. I'll do the, my, my joking MLB one. Um, so they're still on strike. Moving on. Um, <laughs> this week we really don't have much like anything to talk about the MLB other than what, what about the Hall of Fame? It's coming out pretty it, soon. It, pretty soon, but we got nothing else. Um, why well, I see that people are posting their their ballots and stuff like that. I have not seen that. Yeah, there's like uh, ah, man, I saw and I sometimes I just I I kind of scroll through this and I don't remember the exact numbers anymore. Yeah, but I saw that I think I saw like uh forty percent of the of the boats have been like posted online mm -hmm. already and that there's a good and if they were to close right now i believe i saw that it was um uh ortiz roland and uh bonds and clemens that would get in if it were closed if it right closed now. the day yeah yeah but there's still like gonna be a whole bunch of ballots are not disclosed you know yeah like because there's old school dudes that they're just like nah this is what i'm voting and i want people knowing that's your problem you know yeah i'm with you there so but there's been a lot of good stuff man i i think the one that they're saying that uh he's polling well is um scott Rowland. really uh, i was really impressed yeah man that's what i was reading that he's been polling well and i wish I, it's hard to twitter if you don't like send it to you you know what i'm saying like if yeah I don't send it to you it's hard to go it, back and find it's it hard to go find it you know yeah i got you it is hard to go find it <laughs> i saw it and i thought the i thought it was really interesting to see all, all the like hall of fame and and uh and some of that stuff you know yeah so uh. you know um i was still a little surprised that uh that uh that we aren't getting more love for billy wagner mm -hmm. you know um, well, like you said, it's surprising. only it's only you know forty percent of them have, have been posted, so there's a lot more that haven't. So there's still sixty percent. So Billy Wagner might be getting a little bit more love than we know, just because they haven't posted stuff online. You know, right? Just yeah, gotta wait and so, see. Gotta uh, wait and see. Yeah, man. So I'm trying to see. That's yeah, hard to find. I, I mean, I keep looking while I mean, well, we keep talking and stuff like that. All right. But yeah, the Hall of Fame thing is very interesting to me because it comes out in what a week or two. I it thought it was in two weeks. Yeah. Um, again, I saw that recently posted. Trying to look for the damn thing when it when they're due. Um, but I believe I had seen like January seventeenth or something like that. Mm. Um, dude, I was looking at uh Todd Helton. Some of the stats he had. Jeez, Louise, man. Granted, I get it. He played in in um, Coors Field, right? But man, he had some like just juicy stats, bro. Yeah, juicy. but they're gonna they're he, gonna he, really look at you know taking that into consideration as far as he was playing in Coors Field. The air is a lot thinner. I know they put the balls in the humidor and stuff like that, but still, you're gonna get you're gonna get more distance being up in the thin air. All I know is that if if Larry Walker got in, he should get in. Todd Held, yeah, yeah, Todd Held will get in eventually. You know, <laughs> yeah, eventually, I mean, yeah, I think eventually, yeah. Um, you know, another thing that I had seen was uh, um, Todd Helton. Oh, I had been reading a little bit about him, right? Because I I didn't realize, you know, he was a closer and a pitcher in um in uh in college. I did not know that. I, I believe he was a, like a, I don't know if he was a starter or what, but I believe one of the years he was a starter and then like another year he was like a closer. But dude, he had some gaudy numbers in terms of pitching in college where like you're like, damn, this dude could have gone pro as a pitcher. And then, you know, he was Tennessee's starting quarterback and you know who replaced him, right? When he got hurt. No. So, so Helton was the backup quarterback, right? Mm -hmm. For Tennessee. And then the starter got hurt. I don't, I don't remember who the dude's name was. He wasn't someone famous, right? And then Helton came in, played, like, two games through, like, four TDs and two interceptions or something like that. He had some good numbers, right? And then a legend came in and took his spot when he got hurt, and the legend never relinquished that, that uh, starting position again. Who is the legend? 
You're Googling it, aren't you? No, I, I, my my watch went off, and I was trying to silent, make sure it was on silent before it, we got any more, before I got interrupted again um, on my end. So, no, I don't know off the top of my head. Say it again one more time. Really? Say it again one well, more time. I mean, there's only one Tennessee quarterback I know, like from the University of Tennessee. That's why for me, it'd be like, oh, okay, it's obvious. Because I would not be able to tell you another damn quarterback that came out of Tennessee. Oh, I, I'm, I'm, really I'm really, famous. I mean... You're probably going to say it. I'm going to be like, oh, fuck. Yeah, go ahead. Give me a hint. Want a hint? Uh, his family is very famous in the NFL. Man, Manning? Peyton Manning? Yeah. All right, fuck. Peyton Manning, bro. <laughs> Peyton Manning. How cool is that, huh? Yeah. So they, uh, so, and it's funny because Todd Helton, it's a running joke. And I, that I had heard, right? I had heard, um, him say, oh, it took a, a Hall of Fame uh, quarterback to get me, um, to stop playing college football. There you go. You know, and I was like, and look at it now. He's and I always kind of knew that, but I didn't know that he was in the pecking order. He was ahead of Peyton Manning, and then that dude, the the starter, got hurt. Then I, I just didn't know how all that worked. You know what I'm saying? Then I read up on it, and I was like, oh damn, that's pretty cool. You know? Yeah. Um. So, fucking a. We'll have to wait and yeah. see. Man, what? I've been scrolling over here for a minute. I can't even find <laughs> these damn things. Ah, uh, don't worry about it, dude. If we if we find it, we'll find it. We'll we'll touch back on it. Let's jump into the NFL. Because we got a lot of talk about Mr. Antonio Brown. Um, Mm -hmm. Those of you guys at at home listening right now, I'm sure you guys have gotten an earful, but you haven't gotten an earful from us yet about it. So we're here to talk about it. Antonio Brown. Oh, oh, here's another one. Hold on. Hold on, guys. No, no. Bring it back. Bring it back. I think we should talk about this one. What do you think about um, what's the name getting fired from MLB Network, bro? Ken Rosenthal. He, we didn't talk about that last week, right? We did not talk we about it last week. That is, is that that is actually something we could talk about right now. Um, just because, I mean, I think it's fucked up because he criticized Rob Manfred, and uh, isn't Manfred retiring or, or quitting or whatever? I wish <laughs> uh, somebody's quitting. I forget who it is. Uh, but anyways, um, but yeah, he criticized some of the things he he was doing, and so the MLB Network. It let him go, which is fucking wild, man. Like, how are you going to have, like, so he's a reporter, right? Freedom of the press. Right. Um, you have to have, you know, unbiased opinions about certain things and what's mm-hmm. going on. But you can't, I mean, is there a wrongful termination suit, you know, lingering uh, because of that? Like, how are, how are you going to, how are you going to, just because he, you didn't like what he said about you? Oh, fire that guy. Right. Um. So, it's, they didn't retain his services like they didn't bring him back they didn't fire him um so they just didn't like a thing that they didn't extend they didn't his contract back, kind of thing right? yeah so and he's not just working there he works for the athletic too so the athletic is like an online publication yeah which actually they just got bought by somebody in new york i forgot who it was i just saw that as well too um but they got bought out in like six years which is real cool everybody was really excited about it and uh so he works there and then he still works the the um I want to call it sideline reporting, but that's not really the right word. But like the dugout reporting, for yeah. Fox News, like for the, well, it would be Bally Sports now, huh? Huh? Wouldn't it? Wait, the Fox Sports or like when they play on Fox? Yeah, when they play on Fox. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So MLB on Fox or whatever. Yeah. Um. So he does like the sideline reporting for those national games. So he's still doing those two gigs. He's just not back with MLB Network anymore. Right. But I think that does sucks that that he's not back because he was critical of Rob Manfred, the the commissioner of baseball. Right. And, like, dude, like, that's, like you said, he was being unbiased, man, freedom of the press. And, well, what are you supposed to be, like, sugarcoat everything that he's done? I mean, that's I would I would ask, I would ask um, how you felt as a writer or the former writer, but that kind of, you know, spells out exactly how you feel. Like, how do you do that to somebody – you know, this is their job to, to be, you know, uh, to give their opinion. You know, writers, they give you facts and then they give you their opinion upon those facts of how they feel or how they see things. You can't get upset for somebody to do the, doing their job. You know, it wasn't a slam piece. It wasn't. A, it just observing and, and, and said some things. And, oh, no, it hurt your fucking feelings. Don't do not do that. Right. Um, so so um, I found something. Mm-hmm. So they have this this thing. It's um it's called the the ball player ballot or something like that. And and it's basically tracking all the ballots that have been submitted. Okay. 
by people. And as of two days ago, 51 ballots have been submitted. And let's see if it, I'm clicking on it to see if it takes me to it. I don't know how much the percent, I, I thought I had seen somewhere in 41%. So right here, uh, Oh no, I think this is um this can't be right. Can it can it be right? No, because I, I think I was seeing uh I was seeing like people this is like um yeah, these are like an anonymous, like just random people balloting, I guess. Okay. So that this one's not right. But there is a I know there's a ballot tracker, bro. I just wanted man, I should have sent it to you, bro. I should have sent that to you. But I it was like a big deal. Because they were talking about, like, the old school people were like, man, what's the fun in waiting to find out who makes the Hall of Fame if they're just tracking everything, right? Yeah. And then, you know, the, all the people start going back and forth on Twitter and stuff like that. They're like, well, they're not tracking every single ballot, just the ones that are being revealed. Remember, like, 30% of the ballots aren't ever going to be even revealed. So we're really right. just, we're taking an educated guess. But chances are pretty high once they know that, like, 70% of the ballot where they're at because a uh, 30% is is only going to affect like so much, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um so I, I found that kind of interesting. I was like, "Oh, okay." But uh Yeah, so it's super. When I find that one, I'll I'll send it to you again, that particular thing, but I thought it was cool. Um uh, in terms of how they're talking about that. And but yeah, the Ken Rosenthal, you know, that's that's really upsetting and yeah, man. I don't know what else to say with that. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure he's going to come ahead. People are going to snack, uh, snack him up, snatch him up, and uh, give him a job somewhere. It's just, it, it just. I think it puts a a bigger black eye on on the commissioner that people yeah. don't like him already, and it's just adding fuel to that fire. Yep. You know what I, I mean? Yeah, uh, I think ESPN should go after him, dude. That dude's badass. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, all over the place. Get on MLB tonight or something, you know? Absolutely. Or they, they always have, um, like, the Sunday night baseball game, or they have, mm -hmm. you know, Monday night, Wednesday night, like, those primetime games. Put them on that, dude. Like, uh, like I said, I, I doubt he's going to be hurting because of this. Um, I think a network's going to pick him up, give him some money, and, and let him do his job. It's just fucking wild that Manfred got hurt and, you know, fuck that dude. <laughs> We're definitely not fans of the commissioner. Um, right. It is what it is. Uh, all right. Moving on to the NFL. The I guess we were talking about for a split second there. Antonio Brown. The saga that is Antonio Brown um, has taken another turn. Antonio Brown posted an uh, Instagram message this week explaining – why he left the game the way he did on Sunday. Basically, it was said that he left because Bruce Arians uh, was trying to make him play through an ankle injury. I would, however, like to point out that he was later seen at the basketball game uh, watching the with the with in Brooklyn with the Nets and the Grizzlies. Sitting courtside, he didn't look like he was having any pain. AB went on to say in an Instagram post, seemingly throwing shade also at the training staff for the Bucks that they uh, they shot him up with a quote unquote illegal substance that the NFL and NFLPA had banned. That if he didn't play hurt, he was done with the Bucks. Uh, for a man with an ankle injury, he did hop and and basically skip across the field uh, before finally trotting off the field into the locker room. Later, spotted in an Uber with his feet up and good and in good spirits. He added that once he has surgery on his ankle, he would like to be back next season. Before we get into our opinion about what's going to happen with him next season, what do you feel about you know everything that's come out? Because even the, uh, something else came out, which was that he snuck a woman, an a, a, uh, online influencer, into his hotel room the night before the game, and then she ended up popping positive for COVID like two or three days later. But he just basically disregarded everything that was going on. Um, I sent you a video that showed them right before they were going to go back into the, the locker rooms before the game started. Uh, all, the, all the Bucks were on at the center of the field. Oh, yeah, and they were yeah, all yeah, kind of yeah. like jumping and kind of yeah. like, you know, getting that big old team spirit. 
And then somebody panned over to the left, and they just saw Antonio Brown kind of like walking away, going to the locker room all by himself. He was the only one that wasn't in the middle of the field. And the caption read, when you know something's about to go down that ain't good or that ain't right or something like that, you know, what? how do you feel about this whole Antonio Brown? Talk? Other than him being a fucking diva and acting a fool, how do you feel about this, man? Well, I mean, there's a couple things you left out, which is, it's okay. At least I get a <laughs> chance because, again, you don't get to see all of it. Yeah. No, not, nothing bad, compa. Um, but did you see what uh, he said about uh, Bruce Arians? Oh, his, uh, Tom like Brady? That? And the Tom Brady ones, yep. bro. Like the Tom Brady's were bad. He's like, oh man, you know, why am I playing on? Why am I playing on a prove it contract? You know, if I was really his friend, um, you know, just like Gronk isn't playing on a prove it contract. Again, Gronk hasn't been this prima donna. Yeah, he, he's comparing apples and oranges. Like, dude, like he's been a stand up citizen. He's never caused any problems where he's at. He asked to retire early because he was concerned for his own health, type of thing. You know. Mm -hmm. there's a big difference between the way Gronk has carried himself and he's been rewarded for Absolutely. it as opposed to uh, what Antonio Brown has done, you know? He's lucky that he even got that offer from from Tampa Bay. Nobody else was picking him up, you know? Yeah. Um, he was with the Patriots for what, a day, a week? A I game? think a week. Yeah, right? Yeah, he played one game, and then, just like, and then they're like, yeah, you're too much of a headache, like, bye. Yeah, yeah, right? Um, that says a lot, bro. And now him throwing Tom Brady, who is, you know, the Michael Jordan of football, basically, right? What did yeah, you say? I, I, I would. I mean, it, it, you could put him up there like that. Be, it used to be John Mon Joe Montana, but I mean, Tom Brady's really the dude. He's you, got what, you, seven rings. You can't, you can't ignore the rings right there. So yes, I would say I he'd mean, be the Michael Jordan of 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 football right football, now. Football, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean, I mean. Yeah, dude, unless someone else comes around and just does some stuff, you know? Um, but he, man, he really threw Tom Brady under the bus. And that's after Tom Brady saying, like, hey, you know, we really need to help him wherever we can. Like, talking nothing but nice about him, dude. Mm -hmm. And then he puts Bruce Arias, he screenshots Bruce Arias texts and stuff like that. Like, oh, yeah, coach, I'm ready. Let me know. I really want to play, but my ankle hurts, blah, blah, blah. And then he tells him, be ready. We're, we're not taking the week off. We're not, we're not resting until the playoffs, blah, blah, blah. Like, dude, that's all stuff that tells me you're never playing again, and you may be worse than Terrell Owens. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It, it's one of those things where, and, then, and the analysts are talking about it, if you're hurt and you're injured and you can't play, you don't suit up. It's just, it's plain and simple. You don't suit up. You don't put the pads on. You don't go out there. You don't get dressed. Like, he already knew, I think, before going into that game, what he was going to do or that he wasn't going to finish that game. Uh, just the way he acted and the way he treated everybody. Like, really, the, the the Bucks didn't need him. They got him right at the right time because um, what's his name got hurt? Mike Evans, right? Uh, uh, no, no. Uh, Godwin. Godwin. Well, Godwin and Evans have been hurt a lot this year. So he kind of filled that, he filled that void. And... The thing with Antonio Brown is if he if he knows you need him, he acts a fool. When he knows you don't need him, he's kind of like, oh, what do you need? What do you need? What do you need? Like, oh, yeah. let me let me help you. Let me How help can you. I help? Yeah. yeah. The yeah. second the second he knows, nah, you need me right now. You know, I'm gonna be who I am or whatever. And then once Evans and everybody came back, he's like, it's like you were telling me he he went in to to ask for his bonuses. To guarantee those bonuses because he didn't feel like he was going to get those 150 yards and a touchdown to be able to meet those requirements to get those bonuses, and they told him, "No, dude, like go out there. You you have the opportunity to get a touchdown, 150 yards in a game. Like you have the talent to do it." And he was upset because he was like, "No, Gronk's back and Evans is back, and and you know, like I'm not going to get any any uh, any play or whatever." And I think he just used the whole ankle thing as an excuse for himself. To justify himself to get off the field and, and and to to leave, and then if he's trying to to go to another team, this is not the way to show that you want to be a team player. Okay, yeah, yeah. I felt I did. Uh, no, nah, I'm with you. I totally agree with you. I didn't even think about it, but you're 100 percent right about him. When they need him, this dude all of a sudden like, oh look, bro, pay me this all this other junk right mm -hmm. but when they don't need him where he's just a, a supporting character another dude you know he's like yeah what can i do what can i do you're very right and i honestly i think we've seen him play his last football game in the nfl 
Um, yeah. My personal opinion, I think him throwing Brady under the bus really was just like, oh, dude, that was the cherry the on the get. Sunday right there. Yeah, because what what does what does it have anything to do with Tom Brady, whether you get your contract or not? I mean, you're comparing Rob Bronkowski, but now you're comparing again something very different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you're not Rob, bro. Rob's not has never been a headache like that. You know. Agree. Rob's only been on one team, and he has basically he he just retired. You know, and it's not like he left that team in a bad spot because there was other really good tight ends that maybe just didn't really do much um, when he left. But still, there was another good tight end. I'm trying to blank on who it is right now. But remember that other tight end was getting a lot of Cam and Bray. And everybody thought, yeah, uh, that he's gonna no, no, no on the Patriots. When oh, on started. the Patriots. Oh, my bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm drawing a blank. Who that it's not Hernandez. Right now. <laughs> no, <laughs> well, they were they were together though. But yeah, 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 not not at that moment. I forgot who the dude was right now. Yeah, I'll tell anyway, you. So, um, so yeah, dude. So other than that, like, what did Tom Brady do, man? Like that you had to like throw his name or drag his name on. It. And you know what? I saw Adam Schefter or something like that say, "Man, dude, we might actually be watching someone with CTE, the CTE yeah. actual syndrome." That's right now. that was going to be my next my next point. Is a lot of people after that happened we're like this isn't okay this isn't normal somebody needs to get him to go see somebody because he may be suffering from a traumatic brain injury and he needs to go and and get seen and get help before the next big um news cycle whatever comes up with antonio brown and that's that he hurt himself somebody else or god forbid he's dead because of the injury that you know he he sustained you know sometime during his career and just never got got it taken care of Mm -hmm. you know what i mean i mean the bucks are on their well on their way to play deep into the playoffs let's be realistic and you know yeah you want to get that extra little bit of money because for whatever reason you know you're you're on a prove it contract well shit man you haven't been able to prove it that you can make it through a season without any problems or this and that, blah, blah, blah. They give you the opportunity. Like you said, hey, man, I could be that guy for you. Okay, well, then here you go. Here's a contract. If you're that guy, we'll pay you the money. If you're not that guy, then we're not going to pay you all the money. We're going to give you some of the money because you've been in the league so long. But it's just it's, – it's sad to see somebody like that. It really does – I don't think anybody would be surprised if in – a week, two weeks, three weeks, whatever, they come out and they're like, or his camp or whatever comes out and goes, yeah, you know, he's suffering from CTE, traumatic brain injury caused by football. We're getting him the help he needs and this and that, blah, blah, blah. But I don't think he surrounds himself with the type of people that that are going to are, are gonna push him in that direction. I think he mm-hmm. surrounds himself with, with a lot of yes men and uh, yeah. people that are just trying to ride the wave when he's, you know, uh, um, famous and, and making money and stuff like that, which uh, it's a very dangerous position to put yourself in when you're like that. Yeah. Yeah, man. So, yeah, I think he's done and um, I don't like it. I mean, even just the way he left, bro. Like, even the way he left, takes off his jersey, all that stuff. Like, dude, that's just a bad sign. Like, if it's really their fault, right? Like, because it's always someone else's fault. It's never his fault, right? <laughs> right. Um, just the way it happened you know that dude tried to get an uber to like leave the stadium and they didn't let him or something like that Mm -hmm. you know and like you said it said it seemed like he was setting this all up because before the game even started right they had the huddle at the midfield and you're like he's just he's just um instigating and premeditating all this stuff you know yeah well, you know, what's all he did and showing up the team the way he did, running off the field while the team was still on the field on a crucial third down of the game. They were actually losing that game at the time. Um, mm-hmm. I, and I'm pretty sure you, compa, would agree that AB will not be with the team next season. Um, some wild things would have to come out, and heads would really have to roll, inclus- including uh, Bruce Arians, for any misconduct that would have come out. But this is the good old boys club, like you've said plenty of times. Bruce Arians is a player's coach. He's been known as a players coach and advocate for the players, uh, but going after Brady, going after the Bucks, going after Bruce Arians, like you better have the smoke and gun there. And I don't think he does. I think it's in his head. And yeah. it's just, this may have been the last time we see Antonio Brown in any way, shape or form on a football field. All right. I don't even think anybody would want him as an analyst, the way he's acting. 
No, yeah. Because yeah, usually they take the clean cut guys, the guys that are you know, well spoken, not at, never acted a fool, never gotten any problems. Those are the guys that they put on the networks. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. is what it is, my friend. Um, let's see. Um, What's up? So I, I found some of the stats for the Hall of Fame, the stuff that I was talking to you about. Okay. So the Hall of Fame is uh is announced uh, on um, January twenty fifth. Okay, you need 75% to get in. There are 138 public votes, Mm -hmm. ballots, I'm sorry, already. There are seven anonymous, unverifiable ballots that have been published as well, too. So that's 145, Mm -hmm. but sticking to the 138, right? A percentage of the ballots that are known are 37%. So 37% of the known ballots so far, right? Of the 37 that have actually been casted, there are known, right? Mm-hmm. Um, there's a there is Barry Bonds is at 80.7 percent right now. Roger Clemens is at 79.3. Mm. Andrew Jones is at 50.3. Um, Manny Ramirez is at 40 percent. Um, and the other one that's doing really that's polling well is um, Scott Rowland, seventy one point seven percent. And that's uh, of the thirty four percent that have been counted, right? Thirty seven percent. The known yeah. ones, yeah. Yeah, that are known. So you need there's an estimated three three hundred and ninety two ballots that are gonna be casted. Mm-hmm. So they need two hundred and ninety four ballots. Uh I'm um, sorry. They need 294 votes to um, become hit the 75 percent, assuming 392 um, get it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Or turn it in. So knowing that 294 is kind of the magic number, right? Mm-hmm. So Barry Bonds has 117. Roger Clemens has 115. David Ortiz has 121. Mm-hmm. And Scott Rowland has 104. Those are the only ones in triple digits. Those are the ones trending in the right direction. Yeah. So they're our public. Um, pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. Again, Barry Bonds, suspected cheater. Uh, Roger Clemens, suspected cheater. And David Ortiz, a known PD yeah. cheater. So that one is the one that always just surprised me. Like I don't have a problem with David Ortiz getting in, bro, mm-hmm. but not right away. You know, not yeah. I think I think we've talked about this before when we knew he was going to come up for for the voting. Um, we could see why. You know, he's a prolific defense, uh, designated hitter, uh, one of yeah. the best designated hitters of our time. But yeah. he did uh, pop positive for PEDs. I don't think he should be going in right away. Um, in a couple of years, because then where do you draw the lines? You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. Barry Bonds is suspected. Roger Clemens is suspected. Yeah, granted, we think they did it, right? Well, it's pretty obvious that they <laughs> pretty did. sure they you did it, saying? but still, yeah, yeah. But they didn't actually fail anything, bro. And Ortiz did, man. He literally failed it. You know, was suspended for 50 games, literally. So what's the difference? You know what I'm saying? Like I don't, I don't understand. How can you vote? Yes, for Ortiz, but no for Roger and Barry, you know? Yeah. And that's, that's why a I'm tough like, one. okay, I, I'm voting no on David and and uh, and uh, Clemens Barry and Bonds. And Roger. Yeah. Yeah, you know? And um, I think the Veterans Committee eventually lets Barry and Roger in anyways. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, I mean, they don't get in. Like, another one is, like, Rafael Palmero. That dude got suspended twice, right, for PEDs. Yeah. He's not even on the list anymore. And, dude, his numbers are better than – why? Because he didn't win um, all the awards that – or the World Series that David Ortiz won? Like, his numbers, he's got 3,000 hits. Do you think he, he gets in from the Veterans Committee? Uh, Rafael Palmero? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, at some point, maybe <laughs> once PEDs become like not a big thing. Yeah. Uh, when do you think that's going to become not a big thing? I honestly, I don't know. I, I wouldn't know because for me, it's always going to be a big thing, you know? Yeah. 
it's so, to, to some extent people are still going to be like that ain't that ain't kosher you know right dude rafael Primero had 3020 hits bro usually 360 3, usually 3500 3, are you kidding me yeah 569 tanks bro you know um, yeah, he should be a thousand eight hundred a thousand eight hundred and thirty five RBIs, a two eighty eight lifetime batting average on base percentage three seventy one, bro. You know, like I I don't understand, you know. Again, if Ortiz gets in, how does they, these dudes not get in? You know, a three time gold glover, two time silver slugger, um, four time all star. I always doubt he got snubbed as an all star. He should have been more often. There's like one look, I'm looking at it right here. One Two, three, four, five, six, six, seven times where he got an MVP vote but was not selected to the All Star game. That's just insane that he got MVP votes but was not selected to the All Star <laughs> game. You know what I'm saying? It does seven happen. Times. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, insane, dude. You know, he never once led the majors in home runs or RBIs. That that is pretty impressive considering he had 500. And 69 home runs to not once ever lead the majors in home runs or RBI. That's a wild fucking stat right there. Right? Mo- most True. most home runs by a person who not gone to the to an All Star game ever. Would that be no, a? No, no, no. no, I didn't say that. He didn't. He didn't hit. A, I, I said to not lead the majors in a home, oh. home runs. Yeah, he met, mo- that. He's probably got that stat. Most home runs ever by a player to not lead the majors in home runs. He's probably got that for sure. <laughs> Trivia question here, guys. <laughs> yeah. Probably, same thing with probably the RBIs. He's probably 1,800 RBIs is a lot. And that dude's probably got the most RBIs ever to not lead the majors in RBIs. He never won a batting title. He never won a base percentage title. And he did lead the ma- majors in hits once and run scored once and doubles once as well, too. Yeah. I mean, I remember him, dude. Uh, I liked his swing. I. I try to model my swing a little bit after his, um, but he had a hitch to his swing. So, and I remember reading about it and kind of analyzing it. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, because if uh, he had like a three hitch uh, part to his swing, and the problem is if something's going wrong with one of the three parts, it's it's uh, it's causes major slumps, which is why his batting average is like, well, I don't think he ever hit over 300. I'm going to check right now. Um, why well, I could see he hit 300 one time. Two times, three times, four times, four times. Okay, with the high of three twenty-four. Um, but yeah, uh, I could see why like three hitch swings are kind of tough. Uh, the other one that had a three hitch swing too uh, sometimes was um, Chipper Jones. So those are always a little tough. That's why I was like, oh, I stayed away from it. I tried to yeah. go one or two hitch swing swings. You know, mine was a two hitch type of thing. So, Look. anyways, yeah, this is a dude that uh, like again. If if um, David Ortiz is in there, man, there's no reason why. And a lot of people don't t- talk about Rafael Romero, bro. Like nobody. Why talks do you about think it. that's a? Why do you think that's a thing? I think because he violated the the um, the PDs twice, dude. Mm. Like just like nobody's talking about uh, about Robinson Cano. He him and Robinson Cano are gonna be in the same exact boat, dude. Same exact boat. I think because Robinson already got ca- caught twice, right? Yeah. Yeah, dude. Um, yeah, dude. Uh, oh, I just saw this arrest warrant for Miguel Tejada. So oh. what? Um, yeah, it says swimming A's arrest warrant for on uh, um, December 19th. Uh, yeah, dude. I don't know. Just because of, of him being popped for PEDs. That's why I think him and him and, um, uh, Robinson Cano are going to be in the same boat, and I just and a lot of people just didn't like Rafael. I don't know, bro. He also he also threw a lot of shade at Will Clark too. You know what I'm saying? And Will Clark was like a fan favorite type of thing. You know? Yeah. Them two had beef. Um, they I don't know. Did you ever see the the story of the ESPN Thirty for Thirty on them? No, I have not. They both played, I believe, at Mississippi State, bro, and they were just like, they're they're just double trouble you know like they're absolutely i think they called them lightning and thunder or something like that dude like they were insane just gods on the college scene and then they went into the pros and 
And uh, so Rafael, I think, had the more accomplished career, but you know, Will the Thrill was more of like he <laughs> became instantly like a stud right away off the bat. You know yeah. What I'm but the numbers were better for Rafael Palmero. I like you know, it. If, if Will Clark had the stats that Rafael Palmero had, yeah. Will Clark would be a Hall of Famer, you know? Yeah. So. That's funny, man. Will the Thrill. You didn't know that? <laughs> I didn't know that one. I didn't know that one. Uh, Will the Thrill. I mean, he's, he's, yeah, he was a beast. Absolute beast. <laughs> um, But look, he had 2,117 it's uh 285 he wasn't as ho- big of a home run hitter but he had a better career batting average he hit 304 um 1200 rbis so he only had 600 rbis less uh did he have an mvp I off the top of my head i don't think so here. six-time all-star gold glover and lcs mvp two-time silver slugger um but no damn. league mvp no league MVP. He did lead the league in RBIs one time, his uh, third year in the pros. Um, yeah, man, will the thrill, homie, will the thrill. <laughs> oh, he didn't even have like gaudy RB, uh, batting averages either. Um, he had, that's why it's impressive that he had three. He was just kind of always right next to the three hundreds. I mean, his career high was three forty five, and it was the very last season he played. But he didn't even play the whole year. Um, Oh, I see. He split the season um, between Baltimore and St. Louis, so he hit 319. So that was in his career high. His career high was 333 with the Giants in 1989. But yeah, dude. And he never cleared. Oh, no, he did hit 35 tanks his second year. So I was going to say he never cleared 30 home runs. He was a 20 home run kind of guy. Mm-hmm. But yeah, dude, I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I'm not big on that. It's you know, let one, let all, you know. Yeah, you're gonna let the, you're gonna open the floodgates if when the first one goes through, everybody else is gonna be sh- sure to follow like, shortly thereafter. A A Rod, you know, A Rod should be in there too. You know, if you're gonna go that Manny, route, yeah. Manny Ramirez should be in there, you know. But again, all these dudes that that are linked to steroids, you know, they they're not getting in. They're not yeah. getting in. Barry Bonds, Roger Clemens, uh, Andy Pettit, Manny Ramirez, Alex Rodriguez, Kurt Schilling, because he was on the fucking Mitchell Report, Gary Sheffield, who was on the Mitchell Report, and Sammy Sosa, of course, you know? So, again, like, all dudes, one or all, bro. Like, I don't understand it. <laughs> and then they always make that argument. Of, like, he was a Hall of Fame. He had Hall of Fame numbers before, you know, he started doing um, roids or whatever, you know? Yeah. They're like, how do you know when he started doing roids? How do you know? <laughs> How'd you know? How do you know? How do you know? How do you know? Now, granted, yeah, all of I mean, a sudden their physique changed. Yeah, so they so go like, from a, a buck eighty wet to two twenty thick. You know, right? ah, it's been a month, bro. What happened? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was eating extra calories. That's all it was. <laughs> really? All right, man. Let's get back to football here. Um, really? Defensive. Player uh, of the year candidate, but uh, for sure defensive rookie of the year. Uh, had been sidelined this week, not with an injury, but uh, has fallen on the COVID reserve list. Mr. Uh, Micah Parsons, he did not play today with the Dallas Cowboys. He is asymptomatic, which is good, and he should be back for the field for the first wild card game, which could be the Eagles or Arizona or what do we say, the Niners. or <laughs> It just depends how the weekend ends out. There's so many different scenarios that could happen that it's just it's it's mind-blowing how much how, how, how like depending on who wins there who wins this one and the cowboys can still end up in the second seed playing arizona or in the second seed playing um the niners or in the third seed playing the either the niners or the eagles and the fourth seed playing the eagles or the it's just, it's fucking crazy right now but michael parsons did uh, post a uh, put a message out there to the uh, Cowboy fans. He says, "I'm saddened by the news. I feel like I let my team down and the Dallas Cowboy Nation. I'll be back better than ever, and I'm going to be m- even more hungry. See you guys soon." The Lion. He he said uh, the Lion hunts in packs, and the whole defensive uh, team on his side they're all Lions, so they're all gonna hunt in packs. I mean. 
the defense looked pretty decent today. Granted, they were missing a few guys. Uh, Trayvon Diggs was on the sidelines. He was not playing. Um, other than that, I know three of the cornerbacks uh, of the, like, nine cornerbacks that we have now, they uh, they were on the COVID list as well. Dak and, and Zeke were at that game as well, but they didn't get sick, thankfully. I guess they weren't out partying uh, when everybody else was. So I'm glad to see that some of them were being re- responsible and taking care of what they needed to do a week before the playoffs. But I'm glad it's now and not next week. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. It could be. It could be. It could have been worse. Um, yeah. And they were playing the Eagles, so good time to miss. Good time to miss. We did win what fifty-one to twenty, somewhere around there. Yeah, smack those fools. Yeah. The first quarter, yeah, I was a little nervous. The second most points ever scored. <laughs> In a game between uh, Philly and Dallas. Yep. Or, like, by Dallas in a game between Philly and Dallas. Yeah. I was nervous for about a quarter. And then we were up by two. We went into the locker room at the beginning of the first half, up by two scores. We came out and scored again. So we were up by three at that point. So I was like, ah, kind of sit back, relax, shoot the shit. Um, it did, we did enjoy watching it over there with you, compa. So it's good times, good times. Uh, see, maybe it's good luck. Stay at your house. I, don't do that because I'm about to go to your house every fucking weekend. <laughs> um, it, it's it's one of those things. I'm just glad that they that they look good at least in this last, if you want to call it, tune up game. But once again, they're playing the Eagles. The Cowboys went undefeated in the NFC East. Um, let's just be real. They are not. It's not the most difficult division to play in right now. Um, and it just is what it is. I would hate to see the – the. Uh, I would love to see the Eagles again in the first round of the playoffs. That's my that's my favorite pick right there. If we get to pick – if we get to play against somebody, I would love it to be the Eagles because I think that we would just do somewhat of what we did today. I still think we would win by two touchdowns. Uh, but, you know, obviously Jalen Hurts wasn't playing. Uh, some of the running backs, some of their receivers weren't playing. But uh, it's what it is, man. It's what it is. I'll take the W. I'll walk away. This morning, Denver almost stole one from the uh, Chiefs. But uh, the Chiefs, uh, with a very timely defensive play to pick up a uh, a fumble by Eckler. Not Eckler. Who's the their, their running back? Denver Broncos. Um, used to play for the oh, Chargers. The um, Melvin Gordon. Melvin Gordon uh, fumbled uh, late in the fourth quarter. Uh, the Chiefs picked it up and ran it back. Touchdown, Chiefs. And that's all she wrote at that point. They never got a chance to go back out there and, and, and handle business. But, you know, I, I text Ramon earlier in the day. I was like, hey, man, you guys going to pull this win out? He's like, yeah, we're always going to beat these guys. And I was like, oh, okay. And then, like, end of the second quarter, I was like, oh, shit, they're up 14-11. Hey, this could happen. Holy Christ. Yeah, then the – the uh, I think the, the the thin air and the high altitude got to the Chiefs a little bit, but then they figured it out in the second half and uh, took care of business when they needed to. So even though it was a tight game, you know they they took care of business. Yeah. Um. So, fun fact: Did you guys know huh? that there's only been one time in NFL history, at least far as from what I was able to find, where a team has beat a team three times in a season? Now, Stone Brent. It happened in our the year we were born. The Dolphins beat the Jets three times that year. But did you know who was the last team that had a shot at winning a team three times in a season, but did not? I want to say the Cowboys. The Cowboys. (laughs) Who's the team? I guess the Eagles. No. No? The Giants? The Giants. The Giants, yeah, yeah, when they made their run. Mm -hmm. 2007. Yeah, so I found that interesting because I actually thought I thought it ha- might have happened more, to be honest, because, I don't know, I just thought it might have happened more, but I guess you would have to be in the same division and then play that team that you're in the division in the playoffs. Right, and it's I difficult. Which might not always work out because usually if it's the same team in the playoffs, you, it, they're usually like a, a wild card, which means they have to beat like a higher ranked team right in order to play the division division champ champ again yeah which you know that doesn't usually work that way yeah so maybe the cowboys have a goal in their way this time (laughs) 
<laughs> it would be nice. It would be nice. We'd be the second team to, to do that in the NFL history. So that would be nice to put our names in the record books there. But that's not where I'm staying there. I'm hoping that we figure some shit out in the offense. Hopefully this, this game got tuned up and, and they figure it out next week. Because it starts next week, guys. Win or go home. That, that's it. They, they ain't no more. Well, we, next week we'll get them. No, it's win or go home at this point. Um, it's just a matter of who we see first, who we see second, and and if Green Bay, if it's if it stays in Green Bay or Arizona or LA or what's gonna happen. So, oh, from the three big ones, which one would you rather see in the second round? Between Green Bay, Arizona, and LA, and Tampa Bay too. No, well, you said the big th- the three, so the big four. Well, well, big three is really Tampa Bay, Arizona, and I'm not Tampa Bay, Green Bay, and uh, LA. If you have- me, mm. I don't think Arizona if I had to pick, because... if I had to pick the, th- the one of those three for the Cowboys to see in the second round, I'm gonna go with Tampa Bay. You know, I was actually gonna say I think Tampa Bay because I feel like they're hurting. They're they're just yeah, they're, they're not at a hundred percent right now. You know? Yeah, they're like they have a lot of stuff going on. End. <laughs> you know, they got Evans. If you could shut down Evans, you're gonna be all right. You know, I'll shut him down like our and Evan for for net, huh? I said I'll shut. We'll shut him down like like uh, our Evan. We're good. Oh, <laughs> but um, you know, Evans a big dude, so I don't know if Diggs can handle that dude. And the big thing is, you're gonna have Tom Brady throwing the ball as opposed to some scrub. That's been throwing against the Cowboys for the most part. Man, I can't believe how many second string quarterbacks you guys have faced. Like, again, today, you faced another second Gardner string Minshew, quarterback. Gardner Minshew, yeah. They, the Eagles didn't yeah. want, because the Eagles are in already. They didn't want Jalen Hurts getting hurt uh, today. Right. So, I mean, good on them. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense, you know? But, um, but I, with that, you know, they're down Antonio Brown. They're down um, Godwin. They're down Leonard Fournette. So now they got Gronk and Evans, basically. And Gronk's been kind of quiet, you know, um, lately. Silent thunder. So, yeah. And then they just been hobbling, bro. I mean, they barely beat the Jets last week, right? Yep. <laughs> oh, you know? Came back That's in the second half to win. Them, you know? But, yeah, no, I, I think of the three, you're giving me an option between the three. I'm taking the Cowboys on that one. I still think it's going to be a close game. Um, I think it gives um, – Greg Zerline, an opportunity to make up for that week one loss. Uh, I would hate to have it come down to him, though, dude. I honestly <laughs> would hate. You guys are going to be crying into your p- pillow like, bad, no. <laughs> Every, you know, when it seems like when you guys take those bad ones, something like stupid happens. Yeah, right? yeah. We talked about this, you know. The, if, the if 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 we make if we make if the, we make the butterfinger if we make if we make the all the field goals if our kicker made all the field goals this year, we would have had a thirteen and three season. Thirteen? Or no, not thirteen. Two, no? Uh, fourteen and two. Fourteen. Yeah. Two, fourteen and two, two losses. Yeah. Uh, you still got smacked by the Broncos and. Did we say the, no? Not the Raiders. The um... oh, uh, no, because the Raiders. You said you would have won. Yeah, I forget. I forget. <laughs> we, we had this conversation earlier. Uh, know, right? We, we would have beat the Buccaneers. We we would have beat. Um, who else did we lose to? One. You would have beat Bucks. You would have. We would have beat, beat Arizona. Arizona. We would have beat the Bucks. We would have beat, beat Arizona. The Raiders. We would have beat the Raiders. There's a three because the other two we lost. But who's the other one? Uh, I, know, I know you lost to. There's no. There's no way around it. The Broncos. Broncos. So then, who's the other lost to? It was a non-division loss. So yeah, no, it was. It couldn't have been a division loss. Uh, shit! Somebody out there, tell me what it was. <laughs> Son of a bitch! Right Gonna go look. I, I honestly have no idea who it was. You beat the Chargers, right? Yeah. On a fucking last second field goal. Still, at least you can count that one. Got a W. That's what matters. Tampa, Denver, Kansas City. Yeah, you weren't going to be Kansas City. No, we weren't going to be Kansas City. That was 19 and 9. 19 and 9. Yeah. 
Yeah. So yeah, two losses, right? Yeah. No. If if the field goals go your way, two losses. That I mean, and that's well, hell of a season. Um, but the boy, I mean, but it's a team game. You know what I mean? You got to have everybody fire, firing on all cylinders, and, and it is what it is. Um, I mean, fuck, Greg Zerline missed a fucking extra point today. Yep. It was the first time in NFL history that the game ended uh, 51 to 20, whatever it was, because um, they missed, they didn't do the two point conversion, and then we missed the fucking extra point. It's like, it's the first time it fucking ever happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, I digress. I digress. Um, yep. What else we got going on here? Oh, uh, one of the voters for the MVP race. We're talking about. Um, they came out and said, "Okay," and they said they said something about um, Aaron Rodgers. Um, he came out and publicly said he would not be voting for Rodgers due to the way he handled the vaccine and immunization status. Rodgers did come out and say that he did not care, nor did he even know who that person was. Adding that if the award was for the most vaccinated person, then his opinion mattered. But for for this. He doesn't care nor worry about what he has what he has said. Where do you think uh, this lands? Do you think, as a former OC register uh, beat writer, should the off-field antics matter in an award that deals with being the most valuable player on the field? Um. Yes, but I I also told you that I think that. What'd you call it last week or when we talked? I don't remember if it was last week or when we talked. You called it the MV MV QB. Yeah. Like this. Which is, which I'm gonna I'm gonna get into it because we're gonna talk about the the season awards here in a second. We're, and we're gonna get into right. that because I got some really good stats for you on this one. Um, but yeah. where do you feel? So that's why I'm just like, okay, you know, it's, it's, I have mixed feelings on it. You know, you yeah, you're right, but it's not just that simple bro it's black and white you know mm-hmm. now granted th- does he deserve to not get a vote because of the dumb shit he did off the field and the way he carried himself i i mean no you know like i i would say no i'd still vote for him you know yeah but i might just slide him down <laughs> like does that make sense yeah like, well he i mean be my number one somebody somebody so right now because of that i would do tom brady Somebody okay. posted, yeah, somebody posted, Aaron Rodgers is playing behind an offensive line with four backups and a rookie. He's missing his number one slot receiver and the 2020 touchdown leader at tight end. He's also playing with a broken toe. And if he is not your clear MVP right now, then you're just simply a hater. Please. <laughs> that's, uh, just, that's just a... Uh, Tom Brady's playing with Antonio Brown, homie. <laughs> <laughs> or lack thereof, Antonio Brown. Yeah. Playing with Antonio Brown, you know, <laughs> it's getting plenty of problems yeah. there. Yeah, so he's also sixty something, you know. Yeah, <laughs> he he can't move. You Mother, know? Motherfucker is four uh, years older I than think me. Tom Brady's and... a dude, man. His stats are there. Uh, the team records there. What they just got one less. Um, you know, um, Rogers has the the best receiver in, in football. I think he's he, Devontae Adams is the best receiver in football. Mm. Top two, top three. Who's who's better? Cooper Cup. Cup. Easily. Cup. Yeah. Easily better? He might have better stats, but he's not better. Mm. Mm. Cup. This could be one's a fluke, compa. One's a fluke. All right, well, and let me tell you. Let me tell you who has a better record. Devontae. Yeah. And Cooper Cup is doing that because he has more weapons around him, you know? Mm-hmm. So, I don't know, man. I'll take Devontae. Okay. As the best receiver. Uh, best stats? Sure. Okay. I'll take Cooper Cup this year. But best receiver, I think Devontae. And, you know, Devontae said it too uh, on his uh, something. He said, man, what do I have to do to be labeled as the best receiver? Like, he's done it year after year after year. And I totally agree. Just because you have one good season doesn't mean you should be labeled the best receiver in football. Now, you might have had the best receiving season in football mm-hmm. but that doesn't make you the best receiver i uh, think Devonte adams consistency and makes numbers him the better are, receiver? are pretty damn good make him the best receiver okay football. hands down okay. hands down okay i don't even i don't think it's close <laughs> um uh, hand down. so you're playing with the best receiver which of course you're one of the best quarterbacks and then you're playing with the two-headed monster of running backs back there Aaron jones mm-hmm. and aj Dillon. Dude, come on now, you know? 
Yeah. Like, come on, dude, you know? And then they talk about other receivers. Oh, bro. Like, I saw that, um, I didn't catch it. Lazard, I think. Mm -hmm. He had, like, eight touchdowns this year, seven touchdowns. That's a pretty damn good season, man. Yeah. That's a pretty damn good season. So it's not like he's not throwing to anybody. Granted, yeah, he hasn't had a first round draft pick that he's throwing to, blah, 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 you know? Yeah. Um, but there's play. Devontae Adams was, whether he was a first rounder or not, is the best receiver in football, uh, my opinion. Um, so it's not like he's playing with nobody. Is that... But with that being said, Tom Brady's been the only cons consistent factor of that Tampa Bay lineup. He has not missed a game. Okay. He, whether he's been hurt or not, he hasn't complained. He hasn't misled, you know, the fan base. Uh -huh. um, he hasn't said he had an injury, toe injury. Like, uh, it's funny because did you see what Eli Manning tell, told um, Aaron Rodgers, hey, man, ever since you faked that uh, toe injury, you've been, you haven't lost? <laughs> that was like one of I the didn't see that. No. Told, it was funny. He told Aaron Rodgers, hey, ever since you faked that toe injury, everything's been good. But it, it was kind of like, in my opinion, I could be wrong here, Brent, right? Could be wrong. Do you think the timing of the toe injury was kind of interesting? To get away from the whole immunization thing? Yeah, because it happened Absolutely. right after Absolutely. That. It was like, hey, let's shift the focus. Let's give him something. You know? Yeah. I'm with you there. So I, I find that interesting. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But again, back to Tom Brady, bro. He, he hasn't had a steady Antonio Brown. And Antonio Brown, he's had that distraction no matter what, right? Yeah. Because first we had the vaccination card, and obviously the theatrics this past weekend. He has not had Chris Godwin the whole year. He's only had him for a couple games, and now he's done for the year. And Mike Evans, same thing. He has not had him the whole year. Missed uh, a few games. Now he's back. And he has not had um, Rob Gronkowski the whole year. Mm -hmm. Missed games here and there. Been inconsistent. Has not had Leonard Fournette the whole year. He's done for the uh, the year, I believe. You know, he carried him obviously for moments, but now they're rolling with um, you know, Ronald Jones Jr. or J Ronald Jones the third or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, bro, like to me, that's more impressive what Tom Brady's doing. Does that make well, sense? Let, let's and Tom Brady has better stats. Well, let's talk numbers. Opinion. Let's talk yeah. numbers right now. So we're gonna get into the season awards. We'll, we'll talk about uh, who we think offensive player, offensive rookie, defensive player, defensive rookie of the year. But let's get into MVP because that's I think that's the bread and butter. Yes, sir. Okay. First, uh, a moment from our sponsors before we get into that. Okay. All right. So back from our sponsors. Uh, <laughs> whoever you guys heard, congratulations. Uh, so let's talk. Let's talk. We're going to talk about the most valuable player first since we're talking about that and the stats and stuff like that. Uh, so there's there's five clear NFL uh, MVP candidates right now. One of them we were talking about, or two of them we were talking about right now. Uh, one, Aaron Rodgers, right now before this weekend, right? Because who knows if he's going to play, how much he plays, and whatnot, right? right Rodgers right. Rodgers is 352 for 513 completions. Um, so uh, he it has a 68.6 .6 passer rating. 3,977 total passing yards with 35 touchdowns with only four interceptions for a 111.1 one year passer rating. Um, and, and granted, his his was it uh, uh, passing yards are down because obviously they have A.J. Dillon and they have Aaron Jones back there. They run the ball a lot this year, so they didn't really rely on his um, throwing, but he did put up some pretty decent numbers. Tom Brady, the next person we were just talking about, 456 for 682 uh, completions, 66.9 pass rating on those completions, 4,990 yards, and a shoe in to get 5,000 yards in his last game. If he plays if for a significant amount of time, he really only needs 10 yards, so he can he can make that happen, I think. Um, 40 touchdowns, 12 interceptions with a 100.5 passer rating for the year. Jonathan Taylor coming in at number three with 317 carries for 1,734 rushing yards and 18 touchdowns and adding 342 receiving yards with two receiving touchdowns. The other quarterback in the mix is Joe Burrow, 366 for 520 for a 70.4 passer rating, 4,611 yards with 34 touchdowns and 14 interceptions and a 108 passer rating for the year. And finally, rounding out that top five, Cooper Cup, 138 receptions for 1,829 yards and 15 touchdowns. 
one of the things we were talking about, it's kind of hard to win the MVP as a rusher or receiver in, in the instance of Jonathan Taylor and Cooper Cup because their success is tied into the quarterback that they have and the offensive line along with the other weapons on the field. Um, should that matter when it comes to your statistical greatness throughout the season? Uh, I, I think it should to an extent, but it should it be the end all? No. Mm. Maybe not. Of those people there that aren't that of, of the quarterbacks that are there, you're saying Tom Brady was clearly going to be over five thousand passing yards. Um, do you think that that's going to be your your shoe in for MVP, or do you think that Rodgers, for with all his madness, is going to be in there one more time? So I will take Rodgers just because of I would it, one to me. I like what Brady's done. Right, mm -hmm. um, I think he came back and showed that last year wasn't a fluke. What he did, you know, uh, I was actually not buying in on Brady. Um, I did think it was a little bit of a fluke what he did last year, mm -hmm. but he's clearly a master of his craft, man. It, it's he's a cerebral player. It's like he knows where everybody's at and he knows what the defense gonna do before they do it. That makes sense. Yeah, like kind of like the Matrix, like you know where you see it play out before it actually played out. Right. I feel like that's how Tom Brady does the game. Now I feel like Aaron Rodgers is something like that, but Aaron Rodgers has the skills to beat you. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. Like the actual skill, like some of these touch passes he does, are amazing. Tom Brady doesn't really do those touch passes. He just knows where the holes are at. And he beats you by getting to the. He ball. knows where you're supposed to be, and he throws it there. And you better be there if you're there. You're gonna get the ball. Yeah. So, um, anyways, Tom Brady, five thousand stat, uh, you know, yards. I believe the passer rating and percentage is where Aaron Rodgers is beating Tom Brady at. Correct. But other than that, and what one more win and one best loss, right? Right. But other than that, he's losing in total yards. He's losing in total touchdowns. And again, considering what Tom Brady, how old he is, what he's done, um, and I, like I said, I it's not that I don't think uh, Aaron Rodgers does not deserve to not have a vote. I'm just saying that does play into my personal opinion, mm -hmm. and that slight edge I'll give it to Brady. I would put you know because you have to you you rank them. I believe you get like three votes or something. Your first, second, third, yeah. top five. I don't know what it is, right? But Tom Brady would get my first place vote. Aaron Rodgers would get my second. Uh, Jonathan Taylor Thomas, whatever, <laughs> <laughs> uh, would get my uh, third place uh, vote. And then Cooper Cup, probably the fourth place vote. And if I had to go fifth, probably Joe Burrow. Yeah. I mean, I think I think Joe Burrow is definitely one of the up-and-coming guys that, like, you're going to see this guy in the mix for a while, as long as he stays healthy. Um, we were talking about – the MVQB, right? Obviously, there are two players out there, Cooper Cup and Jonathan Taylor, that have put up amazing statistical numbers this year. Now, let me ask you this. When was the last time a position player, not a quarterback, won the MVP? Adrian Peterson. What year? The Minnesota Vikings. Um, the year he rushed for 2,000 yards. So. <laughs> when he was like... 2012? 2000 hey fucking nailed it baby Woo! who was really? the guy yeah 2012 adrian peterson it's been uh nine years since it happened or 10 years since it's happened right All who's right. the guy who's the next person after uh, before him who did it uh i believe it was uh um lawrence taylor no no marshall falk no no did not win what MVP. What position he play? I can't tell you that shit. Oh, um, LaDamian Thomason. LaDamian Thomason, 2006. Yeah. yeah. And right before then was Sean Alexander in 2005. That's right. I, I would have got that one eventually because they were real close. <laughs> yeah. So in the last 20 years, let's just say the last 20 years, only three players have won the MVP who were not quarterbacks. Yeah. So the, it does stack the deck against Coop, uh, Cooper Cup and, and Jonathan Taylor. You know what's fucking crazy? Over the last 20 years, the quarterbacks have been basically Manning, Brady, Rodgers, wow. <laughs> Brett Favre, 
Um, and I forget who the other one was. But it's basically been thrown around between those. I mean, if you're looking at Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, Peyton Manning. Yeah. If you look at the list of the last 10, 10, 15 years, it's been one of them three every year. Yeah, yeah. It's fucking crazy. I so, I mean, I, I know a lot of people are like, it doesn't have to be a quarterback. It doesn't have to be a quarterback. I, I'm with you. It doesn't have to be a quarterback. But when you're Tom Brady at 41,000 years old that he is right now, almost passing for almost 5,000 yards, he will definitely be in the 5,000 passing yard um uh, uh, he'll break that 5,000 passing yard mark or whatever by the end of tomorrow. Uh, how far he breaks it, who knows? But it's just – it's one of those things, dude, that's so hard. And I, I like the way that somebody put it online when I was when I was looking, we're looking this up, is that it's so difficult for a rusher. They'd have to be – or a receiver, they'd have to be like stupid, phenomenal, once-in-a-lifetime kind of thing – to win MVP over a quarterback, I mean, look at what Adrian Peterson did. He almost broke the single season rushing record, missed it by like 18 yards, whatever it was. LaDamian Thomason, um, he almost broke the single season rushing record that year as well. He had. Uh, I don't. I don't think so. Yeah. It was. Uh, it was no. He didn't break. It was. The, was it the touchdown ones? Was it the touchdown one? Yeah, it was the touchdown. It was touchdown. Yeah. In it, fact, I think he did set the single season record for touchdowns. Okay. He so, broke Emmitt Smith's record. Mm-hmm. And then Sean Alexander the year before him. Like, they had, like, what you would call year-defining, or, um, what is it, legacy-defining seasons. Yeah. Right? Uh-huh. To win yeah. MVP, not yeah. being a quarterback. Yep. Is Jonathan Taylor or Cooper Cup having legacy-defining years? Well, I mean, Cooper Cup. Technically, he's, he's hitting. He, he's making. He, he broke. He's breaking two records, right? No, yeah, he had a bad week last week, and they they'd have to feed him the ball a lot this week. I think I saw he had to have like thirteen receptions to break the single season um, receptions. That's not. Mark, but but he difficult. has a shot at the um, thirteen though, bro. Like I, I'm gonna check, but I don't think he's had. He might have had a thirteen reception game this year. That's a lot. You know, you really got to focus Dink on Dink and dime right there, bro. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's possible. Don't get me wrong. But, like, man, you'd really have to be like, all right, we're breaking this damn record today. You know? <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I'm with you. Um. So, and, and then at that point, and you know what? To Cooper Cup's credit, bro, did you see? He was like, look, I, I'm all for it if I break the record. Cool. But, I mean, I broke the record with an extra game. You know? Yeah. Like, because he's getting 17 games now to break the record. Yeah. And the record was done in 16 games. And remember, the 16-game record was broken from what? A 14-game record? record. You know, so it's like, you know, at some point, it's like, come on. Now this dude's having three more games than the original (laughs) record, you know? Yeah. But they also did play in a different time. They did. It was, And that's another thing. Now it's a straight passing kind of thing that's what makes those stats even more crazy like jerry rice had all those stats right yeah he played in a time where they ran the ball more than supposed to pass the ball you know mm-hmm. so i don't know man i don't know that's that's just my personal opinion i think um yeah dude i i think he breaks the the yardage record i don't think he breaks i mean again they really got yeah dude see look he's had he had one one thirteen game reception this this year. One thirteen game. He had one, but he he had two elevens and two tens. So thirteen, two elevens and two tens. So again, they would have to hit him um, thirteen times. I, I believe I thought I saw it was thirteen times to break the record. Yeah. Um, which is possible. Again, very possible. But you'd be kind of like, kind of jerky move trying to do that. You know? Yeah. My opinion. Uh, that's a lot of receptions. Uh, the yardage I could definitely see. You know, if you're tar- if they're gonna target him that much, he's clearly gonna get the yardage. Yeah. You know. Um. But yeah, the, I mean, those are generational. You know, stats defining. Right on. Huh? Don't you think? I think so. But is it gonna be good enough to beat Tom Brady or even Aaron Rodgers at that point? No, because someone else is feeding him the ball. Yeah. And, dude, like I told you, I don't even think he's the best receiver in the NFL. I got you there. All right, all right. 
the MVP. I, I, I agree with you. I think Tom Brady's going to win it this year. I think a lot of people are going to talk about Aaron Rodgers. I think when he doesn't win it, a lot of people are going to atone that or attest that to his off-the-field antics with the whole vaccine and immunization and whatever, right? I think they're going to try and spin it that way. But if you look at the numbers and what they're doing and the age gap <laughs> – <laughs> I mean, you, you can't not look at Tom Brady and see what he's doing again. And without as many weapons as he would normally have, and he still put up, you know, he's going to put up over 5,000 yards, over 40 touchdowns guaranteed. Right. So. Yeah, uh, so, And do you ever notice that that um, what they do to, like, kind of almost, like, blend or reward the guys for having a good year? Is they always give the offensive player of the year to like the receiver or the running back? Yeah, they usually do that. So who gets the offensive player of the year then, Brent? That was going to be my question for you next. You kind of beat me to that one. Um, <laughs> offensive player of the year, like you said, they give it to the <laughs> they give it to the guy that's not the quarterback. Uh, right. I would see Jonathan Taylor or Cooper Cup easily getting getting that. Um, I think it's a it's a bit of a cop out. At that point, to just be like, yeah, you're not a quarterback, so you're not going to be the MVP. But you did really good. Here's Offensive Player of the Year. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's, realistically, I think it's going to be Jonathan Taylor or Cooper Cup, e- easily. I think Cooper gets it, especially if he just breaks one of those records. What if he doesn't break either one? Then I think JT? Uh, Jonathan gets it. All right. What about, what about uh, Offensive Rookie of the Year? The two big names on the board are Mac Jones and Jamar Chase. Bro, not Mac Jones. It was uh um, well, I mean, there's a couple, right? But it's it's Waddle or Weddle. What are you? Jalen Waddle, Waddle, Harris, Chase, uh, Jones, and what's that center's name? <laughs> <laughs> what's that center's name? Should be the 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 problem right there. All right. Um, but I think it's gonna be Chase, man. I think Chase runs away with that one. He's he's had a really damn good year. Yeah, really good year. I think that dude's gonna be taken. I know, in the first round of fantasy drafts next year. You know. Yeah. He's entering a conversation where he's a he's man. Have you seen him? That guy's pretty damn good. He's pretty, pretty damn good. good. Yeah, um, and he's got a cor- good quarterback drawing to him. Too. Right now, the odds are in Jamar Chase's favor. Uh, the odds right now on Sportsbook. He is 66.67% probabil- probability to win Offensive Rookie of the Year um, over Mac Jones at 40%. And then everybody else kind of falls behind there. But those are the top two right now that everybody's betting on. Unless, you know, somebody gets crazy and does it. But as of right now, it's just those two. Um, sure. Defensive Player of the Year. Who you got, compa? Uh... I don't know. Dick's kind of gotten a little quiet lately, no? Well, they stopped throwing in this direction. Gone quiet though, right? Yeah. And I mean, how many how many interceptions does he have? Uh, eleven. Too short of the record. Too too short, huh? Too short. Too short. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know, man. Uh. It, it, I think it's going to be a cowboy, you know, I, that or Parsons, man. Parsons. I think Parsons. Good. Parsons looks too good right now. I feel um, like, I don't know, man. I feel like last week's game kind of hurt uh, Diggs, don't you? Yeah. You know, I. I, 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 I honestly, think that... I think, I think Parsons is going to go ahead and get defensive player of the year, or defensive rookie of the year. Yeah. So then that means they give it to Diggs. You think they give two p- defensive awards to one team? I mean. No, the realistic question: uh, If it was not the Cowboys, do you really think they give two defensive awards to one team? If they earned it, maybe, but I, I highly doubt it. I think politically, I politic, politically speaking, no, yeah. it's not gonna happen. All right, I think so too. I think they're gonna stiff um, digs. They're gonna stiff digs. I man. think they stiff I, digs, and and yeah. even though he's had a phenomenal year, but I think they stiff digs. Parsons gets Defensive Rookie of the Year, and I think Defensive yeah. Player of the Year goes to um, that cat from the Browns. Mm. The linebacker? The linebacker. I see here. Yeah, I could see that, man. I I, I, I mean, 
I like Diggs, dude. I've liked him. Yeah. I told Joe I really like him. Um, um, but I just feel like they're gonna stiff Diggs, man. Just because if Parsons wasn't there, man, I, I just feel like. Oh, Diggs made yeah. a run away with that one. Yeah, he would get it, you know? Miles Garrett is the guy. Miles Garrett, yeah. Yeah, because they're talking about, yeah, dude, you know? Miles he, Garrett. Here's Miles my thing. Person. I mean, TJ Watt's in the mix, too. Uh, Aaron Donald is always going to be in the mix. Um, Trayvon Diggs is right there. Bosa, Jet. I mean, everybody else at that point. I mean, after after the, being fifth. If if you if they're and this is the NFL odds or whatever if they're ranking Diggs at, at fifth as defensive player of the year, yeah. I mean the top two right now are Parsons and and Miles Garrett. What ha- I mean, would you give the both awards, the rookie and the defensive player of the year, to the same person? I mean, if he earned it, right? Or you're, <laughs> or you're saying Do you think he earned it? Uh no. Why not? I just don't. But get, tell me why. He what? Didn't, he didn't play today. He didn't play the whole season. He missed the game. What if Miles Garrett doesn't play tomorrow? Uh, okay. What if Miles does and has ten sacks? I mean, a lot come of on. What ifs, come know? on. If ifs and buts I mean, were coconuts. Yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we know Michael Parsons did not play today. You know. Absolutely. And then Miles Garrett on here from what I'm seeing too. He's the the favorite, you know, becomes the all-time leader in single season sacks in week 14. So he already set the single season uh, record for sacks mm-hmm. by Brown, which the Browns have been around for a long time. So that's very important. Um, yeah, dude. So he's also second in the NFL in sacks with 15, just one behind TJ Watt. Mm-hmm. And his two turnovers caused by pressure and defensive score. Yeah, Lead red. yeah man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think they're gonna give it to a rookie, especially when right now they're saying Miles Garrett is uh, the shoe is in. leader and yeah. yeah, the the leader. And I don't know, man. I I'm not saying Diggs doesn't deserve it. I just think Parsons. There's or no, no, no. I'm saying Diggs because in terms of like how we're talking about like Diggs being the defensive player of the year and and whatnot. Mm-hmm. I feel like there's more hype around Diggs just because of the interceptions. And then going wrong, it's a big deal. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I feel like there's just more hype around it as opposed to actual, like, like yeah, that's the dude. Because, look, they have TJ Watt and Arnold around, you know, yeah. ranked ahead of them. So does that make sense? And yeah. don't get me wrong, I, I like the hype. <laughs> I really do. I like the guy. <laughs> His kid's freaking but, awesome, too. Yeah, you know? Yeah. But it is hype. So I think Miles gets it and, and Parsons gets a, a defensive, defensive rookie, rookie. here. And I also just don't think that they're going to give two of those defensive uh, awards to one team, you know? Yeah. Because it's not like they're making some kind of history as a defensive team. Right. Maybe, I agree. Maybe Cowboy history, but not like NFL history type of thing, you know? Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. So, I, that's what I, yeah, I think that's what happens. All right. I yeah. Miles, I, Miles Garrett gets it. I'm with you there. I don't think they give the two awards, two of the big awards to the same team. Uh, definitely Parsons gets rookie defensive rookie of the year. Diggs comes in, comes in in a close second for a defensive rookie of the year, but defensive player of the year. Yeah. Miles Garrett. It, it's yours to lose at this point. <laughs> right. Um, shit, man. I love that, that in football, that's pretty much like the, the big four or five, right? MVP, offensive rookie, offensive player. You know how comeback player of the year? Oh, you know what? I forgot comeback player of the year. Uh, they're saying, well, here, here's another thing then. You're talking about two two teams, uh, uh, two awards going to the same team. But a lot of people are talking about Dak Prescott uh, being comeback player of the year. I mean, I'd put uh, what's the name ahead of him. Oh, what's um, his name? Can you tell me his um, name? Jesus. Yeah. Uh trying to blame the quarterback from Cincinnati Bengals Burrow yeah I'd put him ahead of him mm-hmm. you know he, he took his team to the playoffs mm-hmm. Dax coming into a team that's supposed to be in the playoffs supposed to be doing all that right um they both got hurt right around the same time no Burrow played I think two more games last year oh, okay well like I said right around the same time Meh. two weeks is fucking right around the same time <laughs> 
if it's in if it's the time you write it's in the same month hey. um so and he's a third year player bro you know like to get hurt that quick that early mm-hmm. and to come back i'd like to see their stats honestly like compare them well we know what know. we know what joe burrow's done because obviously he's in the talks for mvp right All right so let's let's look up dak real quick Dak so, Prescott, here it is. So Burrow's at four thousand six hundred yards, uh-huh. and Dak is at four thousand one hundred. Burrow's got thirty four TDs. Dak's got thirty thirty two. So he threw what five today? So he's at thirty seven. Yeah. So yeah, dude. I my vote goes to Joe Burrow. Burrow, yeah. just because he's doing. He got hurt just like Dak, bro. Like I get it. He's a cowboy, all that, but. <laughs> Again, are they going to give that many awards to many yeah, players? To, you know? Yeah, to one, to one team. <laughs> Spread the love, you know? Um, and I just really think, like, dude, he, he came back. He got hurt just like him. And he did something that his team hasn't done in a while, which was make the playoffs, you know? Yeah. Like, Dak came into a really good situation. Joe Burrow has had to make a really good situation. I mean, he had Jamar so Chase. Who's a rookie. Yeah, but he's... Rookie I mean, of the you year, you candidate. Had CD Lamb and CD Lamb didn't put up some <laughs> numbers that fucking. All right, all right. Up. I was waiting for it to come back. I was waiting for it yeah. to come back. So I mean, yeah, dude. I think like like is it a coincidence that Mixon's all of a sudden having a career year now that Joe Burrow's there? You know, coincidence. Or Higgins, I think or, not. Or Higgins is having a great year too. Like I mean, damn, Higgins is might be the best number two receiver in the NFL. Yeah, easily. You know, him or Cooper Cup or CD Lamb, whichever one you see as the number two on that team. I mean, they're right there, right? As the best number two receivers yeah. on, a, on a team, you know? So I don't think it's a coincidence. So my vote, I mean, not by a lot, don't get me wrong, but I think Burrow is the dude, you know, that gets the comeback player of the year, in my opinion. I also think he has the, to do a lot with, again, giving like too many awards to one team, you know? Yeah. But the numbers are just better. I, I agree. I agree. The, the numbers are just the better. the sports book has it uh, Prescott over Burrow going mm-hmm. into Week 18. That's the sports book, obviously. I, I wouldn't have a problem with either one, compa. To be honest, Nick I Bosa. Really wouldn't. Nick Bosa is right oh, there in, in he was third. Another third dude, but yeah, I don't know. Just it's different. They, I think these two players impact their team. You know. Yeah. Right now they have they have uh, Dak winning by a very short margin, but they have him winning a, 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 in it says Dak Burrow and then Bosa in a distant third. <laughs> yeah, um, I, it's just gonna come down to what kind of game Burrow has to tomorrow. Win. Yeah, because he's had two monster games, and it's one of those. Okay, what have you done for me lately? Mm-hmm. Like it's you know the way you end is a lot of what people remember yeah and Dak throwing five TDs today that helps oh yeah but I don't, I don't even think he cracked 300 yards old passing did he uh no it was 294 yeah so it was so right like, on I mean, the cusp small you know but he didn't crack 300 yards you know yeah. Burrow had 500 yards second most passing yards in a single season in a single game in NFL history well two weeks ago right yeah so like you're like damn dude like those stuff stick out you know yeah no i'm with you there dude so i think he's gonna be close that's a that's a very interesting one to see who wins that one too you know and you know who's been winning is me on my picks <laughs> oh, what sucks is i'm gonna lose out on two picks today because we didn't do the picks before the games today but yeah, but we're both picked the same team so it's yeah a wash we would have, you know. We, oh, definitely, definitely. <laughs> you, you weren't gonna pick anybody else. It, it's, it's. I understand. Yeah. Um, well, you might have picked, you know, the Eagles just out of spite because last no, week you picked the. the... I should have picked. I picked the Cowboys last week, and those buffoons let me down. <laughs> they let us all down, Brent. They did. They really did. Honestly. Um. All right. Let's get into those then. Um. First up, we got Washington at the New York Giants. Tomorrow morning. Hey, did you see that they're they're finally gonna announce their team name? Oh, I heard it senior? leaked. I heard it leaked. Oh, what was it? What is it? Uh, the Washington. Uh, 
defenders. Oh, okay. It's a supposed leak. It's a supposed leak. Um, somebody said it was the Washington Red Tails, uh, which we talked about before. But uh, supposedly somebody got a picture of a, a sheet of paper with a logo on it on some dude's knee. They blew it up and then turned it sideways, and they're like, "Oh, that, that's the Defenders or whatever." So we'll we'll have to wait and see on that one. Um, but the Washington no names for now against the Giants at the Giants Stadium in New York. Nice cold morning. Who do you got? Jeez. On a spot. <laughs> Ugh, that's a tough one. Washington? Okay. Uh, I'm going to go Washington as well, honestly. Just I feel like they're going to they're gonna do a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit better. Awesome, it really man. is. It really is. Uh, we got the Bengals and Browns. The second game of the day. I'm going to take the Bengals round because I, I feel like Gerald Burrow's got something proved there and he wants to finish strong. And yeah, I'm going to take the Bengals. Uh, I'm going to go with Cincinnati as well. I just feel that they're just a better team right now over the Browns. I think the Browns just have a lot of internal stuff going on right now. And yeah. I don't see them playing correctly tomorrow. I just don't, I don't see them and this handling business. Yeah. Um, we got the Steelers in Baltimore against the Ravens. A big bang go out with a with a bang or go out with a smack. I think I saw what's the name's out, dude, from yeah. the Ravens. Who you got? I'm gonna I'm gonna go Pittsburgh. I'm going Pittsburgh too. I think uh Big Bang goes out with a bang tomorrow. Yeah. I think they play just a little bit harder for him just because this is his last game. And I feel like Harris, you, did you see that Harris has not fumbled the ball a single time? Bro, don't game? say that right now. There's Pittsburgh fans listening to us. Hey, man, that was impressive that he's touched the ball, what, 340 times or something like that? Yeah. This season, for something like that, I forgot what it was. He has like 346 touches, not one fumble. That's, that's very impressive. Fucking crazy. Very impressive. Yeah, I'm going to go to Steelers. And we're not saying fumble loss. They said fumble. Fumble, period. Lost the ball, yeah. period. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with the Steelers. I think they're going to play just a little bit harder because it's Ben's last game. Mm -hmm. uh, we got the Packers and Lions. Could be a Packers. trap game. <laughs> oh. You're trying to trap me into picking the Lions. <laughs> but yeah, I'm taking Packers. Yeah, we're going to go with the Packers as well. Um, I think that's just funny. I was trying to see if you would... If you would think that. It'd be great if they <laughs> lost. It'd be awesome. But it wouldn't do anything anyways. They, they already got the one seed locked up. Yep. Uh, we got the Colts at the Jaguars. I am going to go with the Colts on this one. That's right. That's right. You got you got the Colts as well? Take the Colts. All right. Let's see here. What else we got? Um, I'm flipping back and forth. I didn't write them down. Uh, the Bears and the Vikings in Minnesota. I'm going to take uh, the Vikings. You're going to take the Vikings. I'm going to take the Bears. The Bears. The Bears. I'm going to go ahead and take the Bears in this one. I know they're in Minnesota, but I just have a feeling. I have a feeling. I got, I got a feeling. feeling. <laughs> um, that could be the decider right there. We got we got the Titans at the Texans rounding out the uh, morning games tomorrow. Titans for sure. Um, I know that King Henry is not and coming King back. Henry. He's not yeah, coming back for tomorrow. Playoffs, right? Yeah, they're saving him for the playoffs. They're saying, get, yeah. get an extra week, bro. We're going to be there anyways. Um, first game in the afternoon, we got the Saints at the Falcons. Saints need a win to get in, so I'm taking the Saints. Same. I think they're going to be a little bit more hungry. They're going to be yeah. playing for something, whereas the Falcons are just going to be playing to try and spoil some fun. Yeah. Seahawks and Cardinals tomorrow. A lot of playoff implications uh, there. Yeah. I just think the Cardinals are better, man. Yeah. I think the Cardinals are better. Um, yeah. And they're at home, right? It's yes. Like at, 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 uh, yeah, Arizona. Arizona. Yeah. 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 And I think they're kind of hungry and fighting for you too, you know? Yeah. Um, next up, we got Buffalo and the Jets in Buffalo. I'm just going to go ahead and put it out there. You're picking Buffalo. Yeah. Um, Buffalo. So am I. You know, J-E-T-S, no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> That's funny. 
We got the Panthers and the Bucks tomorrow as well. That's another one we're going to go ahead and say uh, Bucks on both ends, I think. Bucks. Um, next, yep. next up, we got the Patriots at the Dolphins. The last, oh no, no, not the last game of the afternoon. I was gonna say, uh, Patriots the Dolphins. Patriots, Patties, the Patty Wagons. I'm gonna go with Patriots as well. So far, right now, I think, um, we only got one different shot here. Yeah. We got the Rams at the night. Or I'm sorry, the Niners at the Rams tomorrow afternoon. I'm taking my Rams. The Rams. I know Evan's going to be screaming, what are you doing now? Um, but I'm going to go ahead and take the Rams as well. I don't think, I think. Do you the, see uh... them out? Do you see the blow them out trying to get Cooper those 13 receptions and whatever yardage? I think, I think they're going to try and get Cooper his yardage and receptions. I honestly think, I think they're going to try. If it, yeah. if it becomes a very tight game, I think they're going to walk away from that. But if they look like they're blowing them out, I think they're going to keep them in there to try and get them those receptions in the yards. <laughs> I mean, I why not? I think if I think that um, trying to do that, that that's how they're going to blow them out. Yeah. I mean, like, that's – in a tight game, I don't think he'll get those numbers. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then uh, yeah. tomorrow night, the night game – we got the Chargers at the Raiders in Las Vegas. Who do you got? That's a good one. So I'm I'm cheering for the Chargers because I want to see the Chargers in the playoffs. I, mm-hmm. I think they're a young team. They're now a team, you know. Mm-hmm. So I'm um, because I'm cheering for them and because they need a win to get into the playoffs. I don't know how everything matches up, but I I believe I saw somewhere that if they win, they have a shot at the playoffs. So I'm gonna cheer for them, and so I think they're gonna win. I'm going to go with the Chargers because I, I believe that they're the better team with Herbert, especially at uh, at quarterback. I think Herbert is far superior than uh, David Carr. Carr. Um, I, you got to go with the Chargers on this one. Also, like you said, if the Chargers win, it gives them the opportunity to, to get into the playoffs. They have to win, and a couple other people have to lose to get in there. I would go over all the scenarios, but we don't have another hour to go over all these because there's just so many. If this guy wins and that guy loses, but those guys tie, then this guy over here wins, and then that guy goes over there. It's I don't think I don't remember the last time in the NFL coming down to the last game of the season where it's gotten this tight to like to be like okay, there are so many different scenarios that we can't even make the brackets right now. Other than the the number one seed and who uh, that they have the buy, basically Green Bay and Kansas City are the only two that are for sure seated where they're going to be seated. All right, all right, compadre, compadre. So the only difference, what do we have here? Uh, Green Bay, which one was it? It was the uh, um, the Vikings Bears. and the Bears. That's going to be our uh, our MacGuffin. Who's going to yeah. win that one? I like. I got it. like three. I got three straight weeks winning. You do. You do. You do. I gotta go through and find all. I gotta go through all the shows and find all the picks and make sure we get an accurate count for the end of the week for next week. Next Friday, I will have who won, who lost throughout the throughout the year. Okay. Sound like a plan, Copa? Sounds like a plan. All right, brother. Anything else before we get out of here? Uh, nothing I could think of. Anything good going on with uh, basketball, football, any of that stuff? Uh, we talked a lot or, about football. I mean, <laughs> football. Um, basketball and boxing or anything? Uh, no big boxing news at the time, at, at the moment right now that I have been like, oh my God, dude, did you hear about this? Yeah. Um, so basketball, Clay Thompson, I'm really excited about him. He's coming back Clay's back, back Clay's back. He's been, at, been out two, two uh, years, basically. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm glad uh, Kyrie Irving came back and played, you know, because he played, like, on the road, on a non-vaccinated, like, city type of thing. That was yeah. really interesting. Uh, the, the Lakers are on a four-game win streak. Baby. I was going to yeah. say, the Lakers have won four in a row. Yeah. Um, Isaiah Thomas came out and posted that LeBron James is the greatest all-around player of all time. All around. Um, Because he's had, like, I saw his stats, bro. So his averages at 17 years old in the NBA was, like, 28 points, 7 boards, and 6 assists. Mm -hmm. And then, like, same thing at, like, age 27 and same thing at, like, age uh, 38 now. Or Mm -hmm. 37. So... That is pretty crazy, bro. Pretty crazy. So good for LeBron. I'm not saying um, that LeBron isn't one of the greatest to play the game. I'll never say they're that. They're saying best all around. And I could see why they're saying best all around. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I could see that. Um, 
do we consider him the greatest player? No. Best all around? Okay. I... We can have that conversation. Mm, okay. He's got <laughs> what we say. He's got a, a seat at the table. Absolutely. Sure. There's a chair there and his name's on it. Yeah. He's got a seat at the table. Yeah. So can't say no, say but I can't say yeah. yes definitively. <laughs> yeah. But in basketball, it's so hard too because, you know, how do you say like Will Chamberlain or Michael Jordan? You know, like yeah. they both dominated very differently, you know? Absolutely. So, but are they at the table? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. For sure. But are uh, they the best? Yeah. There's, argu- there's arguments to both ends. All right. But yeah. yeah. All right, compadre. Ah, let's hear that patented goodbye, and then I'll, 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 I'll chit chat with you tomorrow. I want to let you get to go to bed because I know you got a uh, golf game tomorrow yeah. morning. In the morning, let's see. Wish me luck. Hope I do better than last week. I hope. Well, it's not um, going to be as cold. It won't be as windy, hopefully, wherever you're yeah. going. Oak Quarry in uh, Corona? Oh, yeah. I played Oak, yeah, Quarry. Oak Quarry. It's a tough course, though. Yeah. Very tough course. I, you know, did terrible there, but I do terrible <laughs> all the time, but that's just. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where I'm going tomorrow. Um, Yeah, let's uh, be safe out there because this new uh, variant of uh, COVID is super contagious, not as deadly, especially for those of us that are vaccinated. Mm-hmm. But make sure we're washing our hands. Uh, we get wearing those masks and taking those boosters if you're like me get out there take your damn booster mm-hmm. um if you take your vaccine shot and if you want to take your vaccine shot and join the club more than welcome more the merrier there you go uh, we we'll hope to see you guys next week and uh we'll see how uh brent and his cowboys end up planning out will they be the number two seed or will they be the number three or the four it was... my guess is they're gonna be the three for some reason for th- you're saying the three I don't know why. I just got to pick one, right? There's three to choose You got to pick one. <laughs> you got two, three, or four. You get right. to pick one, and, and then we go from there. What about, what's your guess, Brent? I think the Cowboys end up at the number four seed. I think they're they're at where they're at. Okay. All right. I just think... All right. Well, good luck, and I can't wait to talk about the playoff scenarios next week. Absolutely. All right, compadre. Uh, be All safe right. tomorrow. Have a good time. I'll catch you on the flip side, as they say. I have to watch you. Have a good night, man. All right, guys. All right. Thank you guys so much uh, for joining us again. It's the first show of the year. I appreciate everybody coming out and hanging out with us. Don't forget to follow us on the social media scene on Twitter at the blown underscore save on Instagram at the blown save. Don't forget, you guys can also still reach out to us at the blown save podcast at gmail.com or head on over to the blown save podcast dot com and read up about myself already. If this is your first time coming over and hanging out with us, you guys have a great day. Have a great weekend. Enjoy those, uh, the last week of the regular season in NFL. And uh, we'll catch you guys next week. We'll see how we did, and we'll see how y'all did. And let's get ready for the fucking playoffs, guys. Cheers and good night.